right, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Clip number eight, we'll get right to the phones, 888-589-8840. Here's President Obama speaking to OFA. This is Organizing for America. It used to be Obama for America. So these are all his acolytes. Uh, these are all his um, uh, agitator buddies, his community ag- agitator buddies, community organizer buddies. And uh, apparently President Obama forgot all about the memo about the separation of church and and state. Let's listen. But as I said, I can talk, uh, you know, my team can talk here in Washington. It's not going to make as much of a difference as if you are out there making the case. Um, The work you're doing, you know, is is God's work. Work you are doing is God's work. Well, who are they doing it for? They're doing it for Obama, and he says they're doing God's work. I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions about how President Obama sees himself in that equation. Now, a number of black pastors, a whole coalition of black pastors, the coalition of African-American pastors has come out, and they are calling for the impeachment of Eric Holder. Understand he was taken to the hospital today, shortness of breath. We certainly hope that he will be fine, and the word that we have heard is that uh, he is going to be restored to health and released soon if he hadn't already been. But these black pastors are saying Eric Holder ought to be impeached because of the signal that he sent to all the attorneys general about marriage. Here is Bill Owens, who is the president of the African-American pastors. And here he's talking not just about Eric Holder, but about President Obama. So that's a black pastor, Bill Owens. He's the president of the Coalition of African-American Pastors saying President Obama has done more. He's speaking as a black man, as an African-American. President Obama has done more to hurt the American people than any president in my lifetime. Here's a second quote from Bill Owens, clip number 10, again assessing President Obama. So he's saying, look, uh, President Obama is going to go down in history as the, the most, one of the most immoral leaders this nation has ever had. He's making what's wrong right, and he's making what's right wrong. Uh, and uh, these guys also said, I think at one point, that gay marriage is not a civil right. It is a civil wrong. All right, well, let's go to the phones and get your take, uh, particularly on uh, Governor Perry. Let's begin with Joel in White House, Texas. Joel, welcome. What's on your mind? What do you think? Hey, Brian. What I think is that if um, Greg Abbott and Governor Perry give directives to ignore the federal government on this marriage decision by Judge Clinton, these may well be their first directives as governor and president, respectively. Well, you know, and, and that's, I think, you know, and that's the only calibration I just do not know, Joel. I don't know. I, I don't, I've never met Rick Perry. I don't know anything about him other than what I see and read. You know, but, but, but the interesting calibration he'd have to do is how is this going to affect 2016? Now, obviously, if, if from your standpoint and my standpoint, I think for a lot of people in Texas, if he shows some courage here, stands up to the federal government on behalf of the people, uh, I think that's going to be good for 2016. I think the American people are going to love that. They're going to rally to that. That's the kind of leadership that they have been hungering for, somebody who's going to take on this uh, overreaching federal government, this tyrannical federal government. So so I hear you saying, Joel, you think that would be good, uh, not just for his legacy as governor, but also for his presidential chances. Absolutely, Brian. And I want to thank you for standing for marriage, for the ASA, and for standing for Texas. Okay, well, listen, Joel, you're very, very welcome. And by the way, I want to mention again to those of you in Texas, you've got a big primary coming up on Tuesday. We had... Uh, Richard Ford from the Heritage Alliance on yesterday. We work with him. We collaborate with Heritage Alliance to produce this voter guide. It's a killer a voter guide. We're having some problems with the phone app, so that may not work for you, but you can go to the website, afaaction.net, afaaction.net. Go to the website, especially if you were in the state of Texas, because you got a primary coming up on Tuesday. It's a killer uh, voter guide. It'll give you all the information, as much information as you want, 
It evaluates the candidates based on their history, their statements, their performance, not just their words, but what they have done, who they give money to, who they get money from. tells you a lot about where a candidate is positioned. So go to afaaction.net. And remember, as Richard Ford said yesterday, look at a state like Texas, only about 10% of eligible voters vote in the primary, and yet these primary elections often determine the, the, the eventual winner because it's a, it's a red state. So whoever wins the Republican primary next Tuesday is going to be an odds-on favorite, almost a certain, almost a lock to win in November. So go to afaaction.net, tell your friends about it, tell people in your Sunday school about it, tell people in your church about it, encourage people to use that voter guide and then go to the polls and vote on Tuesday. And what Richard said, you know, we break it down in Texas. We've got it broken down into the state legislative races. So a lot of times people don't vote in the primary because they look at the names that are on the primary ballot and they don't because it's because it's for state office. I've never heard of this guy. I don't know anything about him. I'm just if I go and vote, I'd just be throwing darts at the wall. But this enables you to cast a vote that's informed and intelligent, even about people that you had never heard of until you went to the voter guide. So do that. AFAaction.net. Uh, let's go to Andre, Dallas, Texas. Andre, welcome. Uh, Andre, Dallas, Texas. What's on your mind? Hey, how you doing, Brian? Good. Once again, I would like to say thanks for everything you're doing. And I still think you should be president, even though I know your wife will kill you for it. But now, <laughs> in Texas, I think Rick Perry should get him three lengths of rope, braid them together, and go into like Jesus, go up and down, whoop and clean this place out. Because we do not need that kind of stuff here. Mm-hmm. And the, the people do moan when evil is in office, of and believe me, we're moaning out here. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, one of the reasons, one of the things I like about what Rick Perry says about what he would do is if he went to Washington, D.C. as president, he pledged to take a wrecking ball to that place. And I've heard him, I've heard all the candidates. I mean, I've heard them all. I've heard Huckabee and Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, and I like a lot of these guys. But I have not heard one single one of them ever say that if he got to the White House, he would take a wrecking ball to Washington, D.C. I love hearing that. That's what I want. I think a lot of the American people... Uh, want the same thing. Federal government's just gotten too big. It's out of control. It's tyrannical. It's spending too much money, consuming our resources. We want somebody to go in there and confront that. And I haven't heard anybody be as vigorous, at least about what they would intend to do in the Oval Office as Governor Perry. All right, Andre, thank you very much for the call. Let's go to Tammy in Willis, Texas. Tammy, Willis, Texas, what's on your mind? What do you think about uh, Rick Perry? Hi, um, I think... uh not so much uh, Governor Perry, but Greg Abbott, who's um, also running for governor. Uh-huh. Um, he's a very strong attorney general, and he's done so much for our state in trying to fight off all these federal uh, laws and edicts. And so I think that um, he'll do a good job. And I, I, I'm, I'm almost sure I read that they, they had to stay on the law until it could go through the appeals process. So I think he'll do a good job of appealing that ruling. Yeah, and he's working on that today. I mean, I read news stories this morning where he's busy working on that appeal. Now, mm-hmm. and, and, and so there, it is, there is a stay. Orlando Garcia put a stay on it. It's not going to go into effect until the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals rules on it. But he, here's the reaction I have to that, Tammy. And I understand that, and I appreciate that. But if you do that, if you accept that you are going to make an appeal to the Fifth Circuit, you're sort of, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to, uh, I find the right words for that. You're sort of granting some kind of credibility or authority to the Fifth Circuit. You're kind yeah. of saying, okay, we think you've got the right to make this decision. My point is they do not have the right to make that decision. And, you know, so I think the strongest time for Rick Perry to stand up to this is right now. Just to say, look, I, I, it doesn't matter to me as governor of Texas. It doesn't matter to the Texas Constitution what the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals decides any more than it matters to us what Orlando Garcia says. It doesn't matter to us what the Supreme Court of the United States says because we are governed by the federal Constitution, not by the Supreme Court, and we're governed by the Texas Constitution. So you know, I'd prefer to see him be proactive on this and say, look, uh, you know, the Fifth Circuit just needs to understand, you know, they can deliberate, we're going to defend it and all that, but if they come down with the wrong ruling, we're not even going to pay any attention to it. We are going to do what is right by our Constitution, by the federal Constitution and the people of Texas, but you're right, Tammy Abbott's doing a great job down there. Uh, he's running for governor to take Rick Perry's place, and by everything I see, and it sounds like you're concurring with that, he's a he's a man that's going to carry the same kind of political philosophy into the governor's mansion if he wins the election. All right, Tammy, thank you. Let's go to Connie in Fredericktown, Maryland. 
Uh, Connie, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Well, thank you for taking my call. And, yes. and if I could say something, that young man that answers the phones, he is a super nice young man. You're lucky to have him. Well, you know, Wesley's a perfect, a perfect example of the adage, you can fool some of the people some <laughs> of the time. No, I'm just kidding. He is He's absolutely as terrific uh, off the phone as he is on. Anyway, go ahead. Yes, he is. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm calling is uh, uh, I had a comment about the judges. Yes. It seems like all the judges are under the impression that they can do as they please mm -hmm. and, and overturn anything they want. And the fact remains is they all have to, in order to get into office, have to take an oath also. Now, when they take this oath, they're supposed to abide by it. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to the American people, get rid of these these men and these women. You don't need them if they can't really take an oath and abide by it and think of the people that they're representing and taking care of then they don't need the position they're holding. All right, Connie, you're talking about judges in, sp in particular? I'm talking about all of them. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. You know, and the impeachment process is in there for judges. You know, there's other ways to remove sitting officials. They can be recalled and so forth. Uh, usually executive branch can be impeached, but judges can be impeached, and the founders put that provision in the Constitution and I would submit to you, if a judge violates his oath of office by issuing rulings that are contrary to the Constitution, that is an impeachable offense because he has violated his oath. He told God and the American people, I'm going to uphold this Constitution. If he turns around and defies it the first chance he gets, that is an impeachable offense. Focal Point, AFR Talk. Stay with us. We'll be back after the news. <laughs> 